Hi, Josh Carr again. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about data tables. There are some issues that come up when you build data tables that may not be clear. I just want to run through them quickly. The first is, if you build a data table, it's calculationally intensive. If you build, say, 10, 10 by 10, two variable data tables, you're actually running the model a thousand calculations every time you make a change. And that could be really crushing from a calculational point of view. So let's say you have a really complex model with lots of data tables. Your best friend is calculation options, where you can change the setting from automatic to automatic except for data tables. If you change it to automatic except for data tables, everything will update except for the data tables until you change the calculation method back or you save the file. This is really a lifesaver because if you have really big models, you're going to need to use this. Otherwise, you're just going to sit there waiting for it to recalc. And well, that's really an unpleasant way to spend a few minutes. That's the first thing to point out. The second thing to point out is currently, the interest here is 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, 7. And up here, the interest rate was 6. Sometimes people get creative and they say, you know, since this is 6, I could just link this up to the 6% here. But if you think about it, that doesn't really make sense because then you'd be replacing the 6% in E8 with the 6% in D29, but still having D29 linked to E8. Now, normally, if you did something like this, you'd have a circular reference. And normally, if I pressed Enter, that would generate an error. But in this case, what's really bizarro is that when I do that, it looks like it worked until you look at it a little closer and realize it's generating the same result for 5.5% as it is for 6%. In other words, it's broken. But instead of having the decency to say, hey, I'm broken, it just calculates blindly, but it's actually, well, broken. So don't do that. Other things to point out. This 5 and 6 and 7, I earlier did it just as hard-coded values, but there's nothing that says I can't link these to things. I mean, if I make this 5% and I make this half of a percent, I could, of course, make this equal to that and make this equal to that plus that. And you could do that if you wanted to, and it'll flow through. So long story short, you could have a link there and a hard-coded value there, and the data table will still work. Just don't go linking the stuff in column C up to the position of E8. Otherwise, you're going to start to have some problems. The final thing to point out about building these things is sometimes, let me just clean that up for there for a moment, make that 5 and 5.5. .5. Sometimes someone builds a data table and then says, well, you know, I've got this data table on the same page as my assumptions, but I don't want that. Well, you could try to build a data table on another page. Like, for example, I could, I could copy that and paste it. And then I could say, you know, I'm going to link that and do a data table. And I'm going to say that the row is blank and the column input cell is E8. And if I did that, it wouldn't work. In other words, well, it throws up this error, input cell reference not valid. In other words, when you do a data table, your inputs must be on the same page as where the data table is itself. Otherwise, it just can't follow the logic. I don't know why they built Excel this way. I find this to be a functional limitation. But nonetheless, that's the way they built it. If you really, really, really want to have the data table on the other page, build the data table on the same page as the assumptions. And then when you get to the second page, just link back to the first page. So that's just a simple link, which I could drag, copy, and there you go. These, of course, are not doing any calculations. They're simply just linking to the previous page. You know, this is why sometimes people say to you, or you may have heard, make sure you have all your assumptions on one page. That's not just good advice. It also is because certain tools, like data tables, require the assumptions to be on the same page as the data table, which means if you have the assumptions on different pages, 
you can't use those assumptions with the data table because again, everything has to be on the same page. So hopefully this clears up any residual issues about data tables and well now hopefully you know how to use them. Personally, I love data tables at the risk of being overly dramatic. Data tables change your life. They make models incredibly flexible and well, they make meetings shorter. It gives you all the information you need to see as you vary the variables, what happens and what the results will be. Big fan of them. You build your model, you build some data tables. People start asking questions about the model and what the results are. You can show them as you vary the information, what happens to the key financial metrics. Okay, hopefully you found that helpful and uh, you know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you.